Art School 001, zero, zero, Art School 1. <coughs> Let's start off <coughs> by demystifying paint. It consists of two basic things, a pigment and a binder. What makes good paint and how it is used ha, is up to the artist. <laughs> that's, your, that's for you to find out. Actually, it's actually a film on a surface. Now, if you have money to spend, maybe you can buy your paint at a store. But assume that manufacturers are out to make money. Um, basically, paint is the, con the conjunction of pigment and binder as mentioned. However, other material may be added to make it perform special tasks. For example, adding detergent uh, to carmine pigment lets it take on water. The detergent has greater attraction for hydrogen than water. Break pigment conglomerates by wetting agents and dispersing agents for a uniform paint film. Some polymers need a fungicide. It gives them, it gives it shelf life. That's your problem with your polymers. You gotta watch out to get that stuff on your skin. A lot of times the uh, professionals, uh, professional companies that make it use, uh, they put in stuff like mercury in there to keep it from going rotten. After all, it is protein. Okay, <clears throat> gotta have that shelf life. Okay, there may be a place near you where you can get pigments. Get some and work with it. Just be careful as many of the best colors are also toxic or poisonous. Make sure you review some safety procedures while handling them. Dusk masks, latex or non-latex gloves while handling some of them. Be aware of precautions. Don't eat or smoke. Don't smoke at all. Nicotine affects your ability to concentrate and artwork takes all the concentration you got. I mean, yeah, even then, you gotta be careful. It's nervous breakdown cities, you know. Sure, take, get out, take a walk, and you feel yourself like a stretch rubber band. Like, all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm going walking. Are you a rubber band? Your money or your life? Oh, no, you must be a robber band. <laughs> okay, that's my robber band joke. I told that before. I told the bell, bong, bong, bong. It holds for thee. I told you so. Yeah, you did. Huh? Okay, <laughs> am I talking to? I'm talking to the second banana out here. That's how we tell our jokes. All right, so. Okay. Safe precautions. It's good to use gloves for this stuff, like cadmium, lead. You can even smell lead. That's being led by the nose. Okay. You know, and no smoke, man. Don't smoke. But if you do, you take the cigarette. These jerks are out there using, like, lead white, and they got, they got the cigarette there, man. They wonder why these are, you know, you don't hear about these guys. Now these guys making it in their 60s or 70s. If they do, they're going to... Ah, because ah, they're poisoned. That was the problem with, with Vincent van Gogh. Okay. At the same time, at the same time, know which pigments, you know, like lead pigment, for example, Naples yellow. Got, it has lead in there. Uh, you know, that can be absorbed transdermally through the skin, things like that, you know. Hey, <coughs> you wanted to be an artist, you know. <laughs> you can't use toxic colors in, in many public schools. So if you're in school, I feel sorry for you. But uh, make do with what you've got. Uh, respect for toxicity of art materials is no joke. 
handle with appropriate care and in 20 years you'll still be there. You may seem like macho bravado when you're in your 20s but if you make it to your 50s when you really could get some uh, significant work done you may find out that dumb brain of yours is more a vegetable than an artist. You know, you've got to stay on top of your chemistry and toxicity info. You've got to keep a neat shop and take care how you handle stuff. Watch yourself around powders. Use a dusk mask that fits. Now you see like he, me, Forget it, man. I have to shave. If I'm going to do that, if I get the pigments. You know, I'm going to have the beard. Got to have the dust mask. I'm going to let the air right in through here. Tough luck, man. Hey, I might. I'm going to look like Jackson Pollock. <laughs> oh, Saint Jackson. Okay, so use a dust mask that fits. Just because uh, air is invisible doesn't mean you don't have to deal with it, okay? Keep air currents, intakes, and exhausts around solvents and stuff like that. Use your common sense and it will turn into common dollars. Get it? Dollars and cents? Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay. You've got to get that CAD red and Naples yellow I mean, you've got that. Let's let's look at it this way. Let me take that from the top. You got that cad red and Naples yellow all over your bare hands and your clothes. Look like a Jackson Pollock, and your coffee mug looks like Van Gogh's palette. You got a pizza Hawaiian in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. Okay, be that way, idiot. You're only going to be a joke in 15 or 20 years if we still have a world by then. When your mind doesn't work right and your organs malfunction and no one knows who you are, do your homework and watch the sewage specs before you go pouring terps and other chemicals down the sink. Yeah, let's get down to business here. <laughs> it's not as easy as you thought. Each pigment is a different animal. Each has unique water and oil demands. Gum Arabic and sometimes alcohol and sometimes talk, you know, talc and pigments, you know, make poster paint. Or sometimes called gouache. I like that. It's a nice bird. Weird though. Gouache. Sounds like squash with, with gum in it. Okay. Keep notes on observation and accomplishment. Watercolors are made from pigment and cherry gum. Sometimes gum Arabic too. Is that cherry gum? I don't know. I never use this stuff. <laughs> Beeswax is a good binder. Keep it, but keep it melted. Paint thinner has oils in it which interfere with the drying process in the paint. A lot of you guys are going to get, now you're going to use turpentine. You're going to try to use that commercial paint thinner. It's going to interfere with the drying process of your oil paint. You know, use a paint thinner for brushes. Start off, look, we got this stuff here. This is what the, this is what the, uh, the, uh, the uh, naturalists use during oil spills to clean the uh, waterfowl to get uh, petroleum all over them. Dawn. The darkest hours before the dawn. So uh, why why dawn? Is they, pre it, it, they prefer it because dawn is actually made with petroleum in it. You fight fire with fire. Now you start off cleaning your oil paint brushes with turpentine this is a natural organic made from pine, uh, thinner. And then, once you turp your brushes, then you clean your brushes with Dawn dishwashing detergent. 
and I used to rub my brushes in my hand, got them nice and clean, but then I developed a really incredible allergic reaction to turpentine, transdermal. <sighs> okay, so, you know, use, uh, you know, washing up liquid to wash your, your brushes. <clears throat> now remember, when you're messing around with hot water with brushes, it usually melts the glue inside the, uh, that, that keeps the hairs in place, so. Hey, man. It's what we call uh, craftsmanship. You've got to have that down in order to really do the artwork. Makes a difference. Okay. Carnimba wax is too hard. Petroleum wax is too soft. Start with this concept, essentially. Any pigment will go into any binder. Think of your binder, what's that? It's like a glue. The pigment is the color. For egg tempera, pick up the egg yolk by the membrane and prick with a pin. Take the yolk which, which pours out, discard the membrane, and mix pigments with the yolk. It gets harder with age. Cracking depends upon the proportion of pigments to the binder. Egg tempora, egg temp, no, tempera, is a high class medium like oils. Only watch the rats. They'll eat the stuff. If you find yourself like most of us in substandard housing, they'll eat your art <laughs> and have the wallpaper for dessert. These days, there are anti-rodent sonic plug-ins. You know, you plug them in the wall. It makes a, a inaudible sound for humans, but the rats can't stand it. People say they don't work, but they do. You have to put them where the sound can travel. Hang an extension cord with two or three of them dangling from the ceiling. That ought to do it, unless, of course, some of them have to be put right into a wall plug because they actually send sound out through the wiring inside between the walls where these guys like to hang out. You know, it takes a while. Also, if they're hungry enough, they'll brave the excruciation. Um, okay, you can retard the drying of oil with oil of clove. Its longevity has to do with 35% triglyceride of fatty acids. Oil polymers and ox uh, oil polymerizes and oxidizes and some guys even refer to a different thing called sapinifies. Okay. The carbon atoms in these fatty acids are bound twice to each other and as the oil takes on oxygen it polymerizes and oxidizes. Stand oil is a thick kettle boiled stuff. It's partially polymerized. It's heavier than regular oils it's made of. Dry oil has chemically changed. Sometimes dried kelp can be used as a thickener. So can pumice. Oil, cold, pressed, raw, and refined. It's like three types. Cold pressed is pressed out of the seed. This is the best stuff to use. Raw is steamed. Refined oil has been ad adulterated with add additives. Alkalids are used with oils and are often used in enamels. An overbalance of pigment will give a weak film. Damar varnish is soluble in turpentine. It darkens with age and is brittle. Okay.